once again live from Vasiliki from Wild Wind on the Greek island of Lefkos and uh, here to answer all of your very challenging questions. Hello to everybody who's already on board. We've got Timon and Pierre. Good morning to Pierre and good afternoon to Timon. Uh, nice that you could make it, you guys. All right, so I'm just going to start off. Apparently, I missed something, missed a question last week, which was Steve's question about the jib halyard arrangement, this Aussie jib halyard and the measurements of it therein. Um, so I'm just going to do some live measurements, flipping this bad boy around. All right. Just uh, juggling with the hands. All right, so the component parts that turn your normal jib halyard into the Aussie style is firstly this flat mounted block, which will go at the bottom of the mast. Then we'd have another block further up and then that comes down to a cam cleat and then we would just use the cleat on the side of the mast, which should be there already. So this will replace the horn cleat that would have been in this position anyway. But, um, and by having this type of jib halyard system, it does give you a more precise control over your rig tension on your Hobie 16. So this fitting here, the bottom of it, from the bottom of the mast, we've got five and a half centimetres there from the bottom of the mast. Then this block, the bottom part, I'm just going to put this down for a second. All right, hold on. All right, we've seen the parts. And now it does appear that I need two hands to do this. Um, so the bottom of this block wants to be 60 centimetres from the bottom of the mast. If you haven't got a pencil handy, you can always watch this later and these measurements will be right at the start. Then um, this block also is going to need to be a small distance back from the mast track. So from the mast track, this will be, there we go, that rivet is nine centimetres back from the mast track. That is the position where that would like to be. Now, uh, this horn cleat, um, just here, I'm not going to mess around with the camera too much, but um, the bottom of the horn cleat, I know for some people this is uh, not actually that useful, but for anybody looking to do this, maybe it'll be handy. That clam cleat, the bottom of it, is 42 centimetres from the bottom of the mast. And then the part of that cam cleat nearest the mast track will be... Hold oh, on. All right. It's important to get this right. Um because you don't want to be drilling holes in your mast in the wrong place, will be, uh, what would you call that? 38 millimetres, 38 millimetres from the mast track where that starts. Okay, and just while, while we're here, um, you may have noticed this rather lovely yellow jib halyard. This is a six mil jib halyard, and this is actually quite a cheap rope, which has got a polyester core. So it's not as, um, it doesn't resist against stretch as much as rope, which has got a Dyneema core. Um, the, so if I was using a rope which had a Dyneema core, I would have used a five millimeter, but because we didn't have any at the time when this was being replaced I put on the six mil with a polyester core and that seems to work well if you put on 
a five millimeter rope with a polyester core, the problem is when you sheet in, if you sheet in hard, you can feel the whole rig coming backwards um, because the rope uh, stretches too much. So it almost feels a little bit like elastic. Um, obviously it's not completely like elastic, it doesn't stretch that much, um, but it is quite springy, that rope. So that's why we're using the six mil, pardon. Um, all right, just scrolling back. I think we've had a few people come in. Um, okay, Timon says, do you follow the Vendee Globe race? No, I would say, to be honest, I'm not following that um, actively. I see the odd picture coming through on um, Facebook or Instagram, but I'm not actually following it. Um, I do like those boats a lot though. Um, very exciting looking stuff. Okay, is uh, Rear Gun B do more laser sailing? Oh yeah, there is gonna be more laser sailing coming up this coming summer um, from about, uh, what's that month? Uh, from May sort of time, that's when I should be back on the water pretty much every day. So that's when I'll be getting out on the boats and I'll certainly be taking requests. Maybe once a week I'll do a monohole sailing video of some description just to mix things up a bit. Not because I've kind of exhausted um, all of the catamaran sailing stuff, but there is a lot of catamaran sailing on Joyrider TV because that's what we're about. But uh, I think it would be hilarious of course to see a catamaran sailor sailing a monohull um oh especially this next one yes continuing uh zachariah um can you try sailing a 29er or 49er yes i can um we have got both of those types of boat in the wild wind fleet and um it is gonna be uh, a very entertaining video i should think catamaran sailor on a 29er um Never tried it, even though we've had one on the beach here for, I don't know how long now, probably about 12 years. Uh, the 49, I have sailed a fair bit in the past, but probably haven't sailed the, a 49 at all for about 10 years. So um, that'll be good fun to get back on some of that. All right, Martin, bonjour, bonjour. Good to have you on board there, Martin. And we've got Air Trans Recon. Welcome. Oi. <laughs> Oi, when are you coming to Hobie Beach, Miami? It's on the list. Um, at some point, once this whole uh, worldwide kerfuffle is over and uh, the dust has settled and perhaps I've got a few other things sorted out, um, the world tour or more accurately to start with, first big tour will be the tour of the US where Joyrider TV comes to America and we're gonna be hitting the hot spots. And I think Florida is definitely one of the hottest spots with more sailors of catamarans who are kind of active on Joyrider TV. I think coming from Florida than anywhere else. Um, so yes and yes and yes, but I couldn't say when because who can say when these days? Hello, Rodrigo. Great to have you with us. Can you tell me the most effective way to write a Hobie 16 solo? Yeah, um, okay. I've obviously been through this a fair bit, so I feel quite well qualified to explain uh, my findings on the topic. And... Um, the most effective way to write the 16 solo, in my opinion, and what is my favorite method is definitely the bag method. This is where you take a, at the moment, some, I don't know where it came from, the bag that I've got at the moment, but it's a, um, some sort of diver's bag, which is just 
a PVC bag. I believe it takes 50 litres of water, might even be a bit more. But during the tests that I did, I did use a gardening refuse sack, which I think was 80, maybe even 100 litres sack. We then attached ropes to the top edge, the open edge. And then from these ropes, um, I made a purchase system, just a very simple, I think it was a two to one purchase system with a cleat, like a, an old fashioned laser kicking strap would do a nice job there. Or any two blocks, cleat, rope tied on at the bottom and then a snap shackle or a hook at the other end. And then that hooks onto the writing line reason we need this purchase system is because once we've got 50 or maybe more litres of water in the bag, it's very, very heavy to lift it out of the water. So boats on its side, fill the bag with water, attach the purchase system to the writing line, and then we hoist it so the rope is, um, I think it was just above the hull, bit of trial and error to get the height right, and then you take the writing line, put it on your shoulder and just push out. So then you're using a combination of your body weight and the weight of the water in the bag. And that should pop the boat up very nicely. If you find with that method that it's not coming up, perhaps you're a bit lighter. Maybe if you're like 60 kilos, I've worked it out that you do need about 120 kilograms to bring a 16 up if there is absolutely no wind at all. As you start getting some wind, you need slightly less uh, weight to bring the boat up, but about 120 kilograms is the minimum weight for zero wind. So if you're lighter, you're gonna need a heavier bag. Um, I did do some experimenting with the pole as well, but didn't get a satisfactory result with that. And to be honest, between you and me, I never really liked the idea of a pole because it's, it means you have to carry a really big, um, cumbersome item on the boat. And um, you, don't, you don't want more stuff on the boat, whereas the bag, you can roll up really tight, uh, tie it to the trampoline lacing with elastic or something, and then it's totally out of the way and you only need to get it out when you need to get it out. Whereas the pole is always gonna be somewhere on the boat, uh, a bit more weight, windage, something for the water to hit. So the bag is the winner. But if you haven't seen it, do check out the capsize writing with the bag technique. In winds where it is so light that you need to use the bag, which if you're alone would be like winds less than 20 knots, I would say, although I do get a reasonable amount of abuse uh, on the solo capsize writing video comments section with people saying, cool, what are you doing? You obviously don't know what you're doing there, mate, um, and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, it won't come up. No, I'm using good technique. And it didn't come up. So, um, but that was under 20 knots, but over 20 knots of wind and then, if you're a decent, uh, let's not say decent sized gentleman, but if you're a gentleman or, or a lady um, or um, of over 80 kilograms, 85, then that should be enough wind to bring the boat upright as long as you have the front of the boat pointing into the wind. That means, all right, hold on, let's, how can we do this with the hands? Um, the wind will blow the sail and then blow the boat upright. And then, well, it'll get under the sail, helping to unstick the sail from the water because the sail sticks to the water a certain amount, which um, is part of the problem with this capsize writing and how much weight it takes. But I have done several videos on the, on the topic, but the most, imp most important thing with solo sailing is carry a whistle. What? How's that going to help me write my boat? But the whistle is the cheapest, most simple, effective way of attracting help 
if you fall off your boat. When you capsize, it is possible that you become separated from your boat. So if you've, if you've got a whistle, this probably uh, multiplies your chances of somebody picking you up by, I don't know, 10 or something, but well worth carrying a whistle. I certainly will be, and I'll be recommending it in the future. So there we go. Okay, scrolling back. Good to have you all with us today. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, Christian G13. Nice to have you on board. Uh, I believe that would be Guten Tag. Uh, and now we've got M. Gornitska. Greetings, Joe. Joining for the first time, yes. Um, I'm hoping that you might have a challenging question coming my way pretty soon. But thanks for tuning in. Great to have you with us today. Richard. Hi, Joe. Hope to see you this summer. Hope to see you too, Richard. That would be great. Um, the more, the merrier. But I think we could, um, I could start building some sort of montage during this season coming up of taking Joyrider TV subscribers out on a boat, whether it's a 16, a C2, a Tiger, a Tornado, um, with the standard Joyrider TV style video and making a, a kind of compilation of a lot of different people coming out there and uh, giving it the beans, feeling the juice going down the mine shaft. Um, I think that would be great fun. So everybody is coming out. Hello, Tom. Are you following the America's Cup? I started off um, in the bit, when was it? Before Christmas, was it? Or just after Christmas? I was watching all of that. But then um, since this Prada Cup round, I haven't really had time to watch it. I definitely can't watch it live because it's, uh, it's at night time. Who would do that? Um, and I haven't really got time. I've been watching some of the kind of um, highlights videos and that was absolutely shocking what happened to the Americans uh, the other day with the capsize. Um, but uh, good to see... Uh, Ben Ainsley and his team doing well. Uh, that's always nice. Um, perhaps on this occasion, we won't be snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Um, who can say? But um, yes, yeah, great event. And if I had the time, I would watch all of it because it is so exciting. And I think what could be nice for people would be to watch uh, the uh, some America's Cup stuff and then get on virtual regatta and do some racing, go and race in Auckland, so you can actually race on virtual regatta in exactly the same uh, venue as where the America's Cup is going on. How cool is that? Um, yeah, good idea. Okay. All right. Air Trans Recon says, next live stream, get the Joyrider crew. To sing a shanty, what a great idea. Um, the Joyrider crew basically consists of one, and that is me. Um, whereas in the summer, I have got a whole team of instructors, um, but this is the Wildwind team. Joyrider is just me. Wildwind is um, the place where we are on the beach here, which does the holidays, all of the instruction, and everything here, whereas the Joyrider TV and TotalJoyrider.com is just me and something I'm doing because um, I've got too much time on my hands. But I've got too much love to give, so that is why um, this stuff keeps coming. But, um, yeah, the sea shanty, we'll, um, we'll get on to that. And Multi says, yeah, do that. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm being ganged up on. Okay, uh -huh. Okay, M. Gornitska, I'm a great fan. When a Hobie tips over in a storm and breaks the mast, oh my goodness, what do you do, buy a new mast? Or hope to get a used one in Europe, Martin? Um, what sort of boat, Hobie? I'm assuming you mean a Hobie 16. I would 
firstly, see if you can um, get, uh, depends on the age of the boat to a certain degree. Uh, if it's quite a new boat, like let's say if it's less than 10 years old, definitely worth seeing if you can claim on your insurance to then get a new mast because it's nice to keep a, a, a fairly new boat as a sort of fairly new-ish unit. But um, if, if you can't get insurance money, yeah, Hobie 16, says Martin. Um, if you can't get money on the insurance or if it is an older boat and perhaps claiming on the insurance would ruin your no claims bonus and what have you and put your premium up, um, be worth getting in touch with um, the various Hobie dealers in the near area. Um, if you go to Hobie.com, I think it is, then on there, there's a whole dealer 1986. Yeah, so probably getting an, a second-hand mast would probably be a better idea than... Um, messing with your insurance premiums, get in touch with all of the dealers within a realistic distance to travel. Um, being in Europe, you're obviously really lucky because, and being in Denmark, not too far from Germany, where there are a lot of Hobie dealers, and then just see if any of them have got a used 16 mast for sale. Um, there are a lot of boats which various things happen to like perhaps one hull gets written off or something or a beam breaks or something and end result is somebody's got a pile of bits which they want to sell off as bits or as a whole pile of bits but um getting the word out there um am i assuming that you're looking for a mast martin uh stick it in the comments if you're looking for a mast I can put a shout out to the Joyrider TV global community and see if anybody's got a spare mast that um, you could do a deal. But that's what I do. If it was a new... Oh, no, I just spotted, oh, tap, tap, tappy today. All right, sorry about that. I'll disconnect the microphone then because it's obviously not working. All right. Apologies for the tappy tappy. Hopefully you're not uh, watching this on your headphones with it turned up really loud. Okay, and in fact, on a similar topic, got Malcolm next, who says big thanks to Joyrider Joe for the hookup with Anthony for the Hobie 14 rudder blade. And there's, and there's Anthony next comment. Hopefully you get it in the post tomorrow. What a match made in heaven. If you have uh, this... This is the beauty of what we're doing here, is just in Sunday's Show Us Your Cat, I mentioned that Malcolm was looking for a rudder blade for his Hobie 14. Anthony has got one, and now Malcolm is going to be receiving a rudder blade in the post. So really, when I say if there's anything you're looking for for your boat... Um, this is a great facility that we've built here together. It's not just me, it's you guys as well. It's because you guys watch the videos that makes this Joyrider TV global community what it is. And um, so if you are looking for something for your boat, I feel it's my duty to ask the community for you on your behalf to see if anybody's got what it is that you're looking for. And uh, then I could put you in touch. Lovely. Just in on this topic, actually, um, I have. I was going to make a short video. Um, I might even do that later on this afternoon. Is um, we've just had a set of Hobie 17 sales, original Hobie 17 sales in good condition for sale for 500 units of currency. I can't remember where they were coming from, but I'll put together a short video. Um, or if you are looking for some Hobie 17 sales, just let me know um, either in the comments or, or in the live chat and I can put you in touch with the vendor. Uh, very good. All right, we've got Epic Dude 65 on board. He's 13, can sail a laser with a full rig quite comfortably. Do you think I could sail a Hobie 16 and keep it upright solo? Yes and yes and yes. But what it depends on 
is how much wind you are thinking of going out in. Um, because in light winds, like let's say wind under 12 knots, then you sh um, a sailor of any weight should be able to keep a Hobie 16 upright. But there is some technique that comes into it. But of course, watching the videos is really gonna, 15 knots, lovely. Yeah, um, 15 knots single-handed, especially if you're quite light, is really when we're starting to look at, yes, you could capsize. Um, but you don't, a bit like on the laser, you wouldn't capsize because you can't hold it down. You could depower the boat so that you can hold it down, but you'd cap size perhaps because you weren't quick enough to respond in a gust maybe you stuck the nose in or, or maybe um you tacked and didn't uncleat the main sheet uh, or didn't get across the boat quickly enough but it is possible for anybody to capsize in any in any wind uh, probably above eight knots of wind anybody could capsize regardless of your weight it just depends on building up experience and making sure you're sat on the right place on the boat at all times and you've always got the ability to release the mainsail. But it's a lot easier not to capsize a catamaran than it is a laser because like with a laser, if you sit in the wrong place on the boat, even for a short time, chances are you're going to capsize. Whereas with a catamaran, because of the width of the boat, you've got much more time to, uh, to sort yourself out, to save the day. So yes, but you should definitely try it. Um, but also you should definitely make sure that there is, um, if you are going out in 15 knots on your own, um, make sure that you've got some kind of backup plan. What am I going to do if I capsize? Like perhaps if you're going out with an onshore wind and you sail somewhere where there's a really long beach. So if you do capsize, uh, you'll just get blown onto the beach, no waves or anything. Sail with safety boats. Well, that's perfect. Um, in that case, you should just steam out. If you've got a 16 available, that's the other question. Um, but you should certainly steam out there and get involved. But what it sounds like would be absolutely perfect for you if, epic dude, if you are looking at doing a lot of solo sailing is a Hobie 14. Now, that would be a match made in heaven. You'd have so much fun on that. Whereas a 16, as soon as it starts getting a bit juicy, you will feel, especially if you are a bit lighter, that you're fighting the boat a bit to keep it under control and it is a lot of boat for one person when i go out um on my own when it's fairly windy i do have that feeling this is a lot of boat for one person um but like we did back in may you can always leave the jib behind reef the mainsail or if you could get hold of a hobie 14 mainsail even better so there are some options. Thank you, Epic Dude. Okay, Rodrigo says he'll try the bag. <laughs> this answer is almost a full class. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, Martin. All right, let's put this out there now. Uh, Martin in Denmark has unfortunately broken his mast and boom on his Hobie 16. If you are in Northern Europe, let's say, and you've got a mast that's just cluttering up the place, you don't need it, then let's get in touch and let's make this happen so that Martin can get his new mast. Um, I'll, what I'll do, Martin, is I'll put, um, along with these Hobie 17 sails, I'll put this in the same video so then perhaps more people will see it and uh, hopefully we'll get a result. But um, that is what we'll do. All right, we've got I Love Windex. You should make a video of you sailing Optimist. Okay, okay, yeah, we could do that. We've actually got two Optimists at Wild Wind. So 
Um, yeah, that is certainly on the cards. Okay, and that is where the questions end. Is surely this is not actually going to be the end of this Q&A session. If anybody's got anything else, any other burning questions at the moment, I'm obviously happy to answer them. But uh, what else have we got? No, that's a, I think that's about the size of it. I'm quite happy to keep this quite brief today. And then I could go ahead and make this uh, for sale video immediately and uh, even get that uploaded today. So there we go. If there's nothing else, then there's nothing else. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, about five questions will come in right now. But thanks for tuning in. Um, what? Yes. Can we put foil in a Hobie cat? Great question there. But I would say no. There are much better boats uh, that we could retrofit with foiling, um, foiling apparatus. Um, the Hobie 16's got just way too much flex and it's already a snarling beast when it gets windy and it's a bit heavy as well for the foiling, whereas um, a lighter boat would make a much better foiling platform, which is why the A-Class is so good because I believe an A-Class weighs, what is it, about 90 kilos, maybe even less, which makes it a brilliant foiling boat, uh, whereas the 16... Yeah, I, I'd like to see somebody try, but if, um, yeah, but it's not for me anyway. Um, and by the way, uh, I put it on the Facebook page, but uh, something that I just saw, which I thought is well worth a watch, is there is a, uh, a chap who has recently, you're not going to believe this if you haven't seen it, or maybe you are, he is on a 20-foot beach catamaran sort of similar to a tornado sort of size boat he has just sailed around the world wow yeah you could look it up on youtube or if you are on facebook just go to the total joyrider page on facebook and you'll see the link there but it's in german but it's got subtitles and it's well worth a watch i six minutes of oh my goodness is he really doing this uh, that's a lot of time at sea. Um, so there we go. All right. Hello, Paul. Great to have you on board. Did you find any more details on the Dolphin Striker adjustment? Um, if that's for the Hobie 16, yes, I have got the information. But no, I haven't yet put it in to a video. And in fact, that is the sort of thing that I could do in the coming weeks. Uh, well, I've got a boat here. I'm sure I've got a spanner somewhere. But um, basically, uh, if uh, anybody's interested in dolphin striker tension, the, let's, uh, we'll just point out what, I'm sure. Um, it illustrates the question quite nicely. This is what we call the dolphin striker. Um, the uh, term dolphin striker originally came from the tall ships where they'd have a big old a sprit like this, a pole coming out of the front, but then with a like a big jib or something that anchors to the end of a pole, like a spinnaker pole, but the power in the jib was so much that it would bend the pole upwards and the pole would break. So what they do is underneath that pole, they put a similar contraption to this which gives that pole loads and loads of strength in that direction and that was called that was what the original dolphin striker was and then uh when the catamaran started using them uh they started using the same name dolphin striker we haven't got anything against dolphins by the way and then what we can do with the dolphin striker is we can alter the amount of bend in the front beam. Of course, on the Hobie 16, we've got a lot of bend in the front beam, whereas on um, a different style of boat, like on a Tornado, the front beam is, to look at, is pretty much straight. 
But what we're looking for with the Dolphin Striker is to put some bend into the beam so that um, with the pressure of the mast pushing down, it will never push the beam beyond straight. Because what we don't want is the beam bending downwards like that. Because if that can ever happen, we would definitely snap our front beam. So um, when we bend the front beam, this is where we're getting more scientific. What this does is this will alter the distance between the attachment points of the beam. Where's the finger? There it is. So the pylons on the 16, it will alter the distance between the pylons. Because if we're bending the beam more, let's say that's going up, that's going to pull the front of the boat in closer together. If we have a straighter beam, so if the, the beam would effectively get a bit longer, then it's going to spread the hulls apart more. This is pretty scientific stuff. And with each type of boat, depending on your crew weight, there is an optimal amount of bend to have in the front beam. With most types of boats, uh, these measurements are available on the internet um, in like the class association tuning guide. Uh, but on the 16, there's very little out there. So I did some research and got in touch with X 16 world champion, Gavin Colby. By the way, um, oh, I have to remember which airline he flies for. If you're in Australia, there is an airline that Gavin flies for and you should use that one. I think it might be Qantas or it might not be. Yeah, anyway, um, he asked me just to make sure everyone's flying uh, using the airline that he He's a pilot as well as a Hobie 16 world champion. Um, but he gave me the measurements that he always used on the 16. And um, yes, video coming soon, Dolphin Strikers. And this is going to be one of those videos that requires an amazing amount of research and work to put together. And maybe about 17 people will watch it. And, uh, but then it will be done forever and it'll all be there. So yes, Paul, on it. Okay, Martin, thank you for your enthusiasm. You're definitely doing a great job, the Hobie Cat community. Uh, I like to think uh, not just Hobie, but all catamarans. Uh, I will send you pictures and videos for show us your cat. Um, yes, but yeah, that's what I was gonna say, actually. Um, if you, have got pictures of your boat or if you're able to get to your boat take some pictures for show us your cat that would be really good as well because it's another part of joyrider tv that you guys are really making happen and um it's amazing now that we're this week we'll be on episode 85 so that is a lot of cats that we've looked at and um yeah just keep them coming in but anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log off here. So thanks very much for tuning in. It's been a great pleasure. I'll be back next week with more Q&A. But before then, I'll be back uh, with Show Us Your Cat on Sunday and uh, might even have something a little bit spicy for you before then. So I'll see you soon on Joyrider TV. Thanks very much um, and goodbye.